Well, hi there. I'm here today with my jungle carpet python who needs a name. Um, so I'm open to suggestions. He's got this marking on his head that kind of looks like maybe a dragon or Clifford the Big Red Dog. I, I haven't quite put my my finger on it, but it's it looks like a rad face. I love this snake. I, I've I've had him for several months now, and actually we've we've had a bit of a journey together. We're we're actually going to make a a full video about that little journey we've had. But he's finally doing really great for me, and I wanted to talk to you guys about carpet pythons, specifically jungle carpet python. Though a lot of the things that we'll talk about here are uh, applicable to carpet pythons across the board. One of the big differences between them is just the size that different carpet pythons can attain. When it comes to beautiful snakes, uh, now I know beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and I can name a number of snakes that I find absolutely gloriously beautiful. And none of them are obviously more beautiful than this. I mean, look at this snake. Those colors, the contrast, my goodness, they're just unbelievable. I mean, I have seen so many people who have seen this snake for the first time and thought, my gosh, that's one of the most beautiful animals I've ever seen. They've got these almost jet black eyes which go perfectly with their jet black pattern. And then, oh, I love the yellows. They've got heat sensitive pits, which is a great story, and they look really cool. These guys honestly have a very, very similar look, which isn't actually surprising because they're not super distantly related, but it's a very similar look to the green tree pythons, uh, which are really, really rad snakes. But these guys are a little bit easier to keep and have a little bit better temperament and a little bit, a little bit less nasty of a bite. And I actually like both of these snakes, but this is a spectacular alternative to green tree pythons. I adore these guys. Plus they're long and slinky, they hold on really well. I mean, some things like a blood python, if you don't hold on to it, it'll just fall on the ground. These guys live in the trees, so they can't do that. We want to help you figure out if a carpet python might be the right pet reptile for you. Overall, we give the jungle carpet python a score of 3.4 out of 5. And that score was determined based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's begin with handleability. We give the carpet python actually a shockingly high score, given the reputation of carpet pythons, but we give them a score of 4 out of 5. Uh, I say this is a high score because carpet pythons have a reputation for being grumpy. And as babies, they almost are all grumpy. These are kind of little snakes uh, from Australia. I've mentioned before that when you're a noodle with a head, the world is a scary place. Well, when you're a baby noodle with a head in Australia, the world's an extremely scary place. And so, baby carpet pythons are very, very defensive. Uh, if you're trying to handle them within their first year of life, they will almost certainly take a shot at you at some point. So, be aware of that. The four really comes after the first year. And that is when they can become pretty darn reasonable to handle. Though they're much less defensive, than they are as babies, I'm still very careful with them. You'll notice I'll be looking at the camera a lot less than I normally do in our videos because I'm paying attention to this snake. Uh, I've only been bitten by three snakes in my life, uh, despite having handled hundreds of snakes. In fact, I've handled snakes while they have bitten other people because the other people were not being as careful about monitoring their behavior as I am. This is usually their snake, they hand it to me, I can tell it's grumpy, and I can tell if you reach at it, it's gonna bite you, and then it bites them. And I managed to not be bitten. But two of the three times that I've been tagged myself have been times when I wasn't watching the snake. So I am gonna keep an eye on his behavior, but he has never, since I've had him, tried to do anything at all 
that even comes close to striking at me. So I, I trust him about as much as you can trust a carpet python. When you do pick them up, try to be very gentle with them. Try to definitely give them some notice that you're coming. They have a very strong feeding response generally, and so you want to make sure that they don't confuse you for prey. And you don't want to come at them from above like a bird because they're still noodles with a head. The world is still a scary place, and so you don't want to act like the kind of thing that tends to come to eat tree noodles. However, they can become extremely handleable. If you pick them up right and you let them get a good perch, because these are a, a tree snake, so they definitely want to feel like they're well perched. And they're not always in the trees, but they do they do climb very, very well. And so they, they when they're up on you, they're going to want to feel well perched. And then they can become really excellent. But they aren't ball pythons. Uh, with a ball python, most of them, I can pick it up and, you know, I could stare right at you the whole time. Uh, you know, I, I'm not concerned at all about what a ball python is doing generally. That is not necessarily the case with the carpet python. I'm going to keep my eye on it. I had an experience a few years ago. I was at a reptile expo and I, I saw a, a booth where they were allowing a little girl to handle a carpet python a little bit smaller than this one. And I looked over there and I went, man, that must be a really friendly carpet python because as much as I like this snake and as much as I trust him, I still don't think I would hand him off to a child. Um, but I thought, man, he must just be a great carpet python. And about 15 seconds later, I heard a blood curdling scream and that snake was latched onto that little girl's arm. And uh, these have big teeth. These guys have big, sharp teeth and that wound bled pretty profusely and it sounds like that girl was pretty afraid of snakes so it was a big deal that she was even handling one. That's just not a situation I want to get myself into or, or inflict on someone else. And so I would say a carpet python is something that you can handle, right? Uh, you know, if you know the snake and you know its behavior and you know how to handle it, right, you can handle it a lot. But it's not something I'd recommend handing off to people who don't know how to handle snakes, how to read snakes, who aren't familiar with carpet pythons specifically. Something else I love about handling carpet pythons is that they're a very manageable size. And that, that does depend some on the species, but when we talk about jungle carpet pythons, they're a very manageable size for a person to handle alone. And, and not all pythons are this way. Some, some pythons, you're going to need somebody to spot you whenever you handle it just to do so safely. There's no risk that, that a, a carpet python is going to cause you any serious injury, just the possibility of getting some teeth in your skin. and That hurts, but it won't kill you. When it comes to care, we give the carpet python a score of three out of five. Uh, well, let's start off with their enclosure. These guys, as I mentioned before, are partially arboreal though they will definitely make use of floor space as well. And so the best enclosures for these guys are going to be plastic enclosures, uh, like PVC, something that's front entry so you're not coming at them like a bird, and something that has opaque sides, which means you can't see through them, especially for a baby, because like I said, you know, the world for baby carpet pythons is a really scary place. So opaque sides, maybe one side that you can see into it, really clearly. And these are a wonderful display snake, obviously. I mean, look at the things. And, and so you're going to want to be able to see it, but generally speaking, you're going to want to have it feel like a safe place for the snake as well. That's going to be really important for a carpet python. Water and humidity will be very important for these snakes. You definitely don't want to let them get dehydrated. And they don't need super high levels of humidity, but they definitely need humidity to be uh, elevated in most places. And, and one of the best ways to do this is just to have a large water bowl with a lot of surface area. And they'll also soak in that water bowl, so it's good all around. These guys are notoriously great feeders. They, they, they tend to eat very, very well. And in fact, um, they're supposed to be sort of a skinny snake because they do spend a fair amount of time in the trees. They can be prone to obesity if overfed. They don't need to eat every single week. And so that's one thing to watch out for, but they're probably going to eat really well for you. As we've mentioned, they can be kind of a nervous snake. So they're going to need places to climb, but they're also going to need places to hide in their enclosure. If they just want to get away from it all, 
and, and that's pretty understandable. As we mentioned, humidity can be important for these guys, so make sure you pick a substrate that'll hold humidity and that won't mold. That's really important. Like most snakes, they don't have any uh, special lighting requirement. I mean, if there's ambient light in the room, that will probably work for them, but they do need heat and a heat gradient. So I, I would definitely recommend something like a heat pad or a, a radiant heat panel on a thermostat because you definitely don't want to cook your snake. But given these things, really, carpet pythons should do very, very well for you. When it comes to hardiness, we give them a score of four out of five. Like I just said, given proper care, they should do really, really well. However, they don't tolerate mistakes with their care as well as some other species. Uh, maybe things like ball pythons, which if you don't get it exactly right, you know, they, they probably will linger on for a long time. And hopefully you, you figure it out and correct, make corrections. These guys aren't quite as tolerant of those sorts of mistakes, but they're, the specifics of their care uh, are somewhat broad. When it comes to availability, we give the jungle carpet python a score of 3 out of 5. These guys are actually fairly easy to find from breeders or at reptile expos, but outside of that, you're not going to see them very often. They will occasionally be at pet shops, uh, so they are around. It's just, you can't just count on going to any pet shop at any old time and picking up a jungle carpet python. And, and part of this is because they're all captive bred, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, that's sort of the case with most things that come out of Australia. In fact, uh, legally, all things that come out of Australia. And these guys are certainly becoming more common over time. So as time goes on, I would expect their availability to increase. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the carpet python a score of three out of five. The snake itself is moderately expensive. Uh, I mean, even, even for a wild type jungle carpet python, expect to pay over $100 easily. That would be a pretty great deal, actually, for a jungle carpet python. The enclosure also is somewhat large for a snake this size. I mean, compared to a similarly sized ball python, for example, these guys need not only the same sort of floor space, but also more vertical space. And you're probably not going to use a rack system like you would with a ball python, though they seem to do okay in racks. More ideally, you're going to want to give them space to climb and a lot of places to hide and places to move around, and that's just a big enclosure. But the great thing about these things is they're a phenomenal display snake, especially compared to something like a ball python, which is really just going to hide in a hole somewhere almost all the time. These guys are going to be out, up in a tree, exploring around, and when you can see them, my goodness, they're beautiful. I would say arguably the most beautiful snake you could possibly get. Front entry enclosures, not only do you need the size, but front entry would be the way that I would go. Uh, and front entry enclosures tend to be more expensive for one reason or another, but there are a lot of great ones out there. And, and I would definitely go that way so you're not coming at them like an eagle. If you have an enclosure that opens from the top, which like I said, I, I don't necessarily recommend, make sure it has a great lid because snakes are very good at getting out of things, especially snakes that are great at climbing. So if you don't have a great lid, I would not expect to find your snake inside of the enclosure. I would expect to find it probably more like up on the curtain rod over your window. That's where the snake will be. Also possibly in a shoe. Like we mentioned before, you don't need lighting for the snake as long as there's ambient lighting in the room, but you will need heat. And uh, I would recommend some sort of a heat panel or, or heat mat controlled by a thermostat for safety. Like we mentioned before, a large water bowl would be great, especially with a lot of surface area and something that they can get in and soak from time to time. Substrates that will hold humidity well, and hides and climbing branches. These are all things that you're gonna wanna have, and we'll have links to all these things down in the description. In conclusion, we give the jungle carpet python a score of 3.4 out of five. Uh, I'll just tell you my opinion, if I could only have one snake, it wouldn't be a jungle carpet python. It would be something that's a lot more handleable that I can hand off to children. Because that, to me, is one of the greatest things about having a snake, is just being able to share it with other people and, and to hold it and interact with it. And these guys are great about it, but I just don't trust them as much with other people who don't know their behavior and how to treat a snake. But 
If you've already got a snake that's great to handle and hand off to other people, is a jungle carpet python just a stinking amazing pet snake, especially for a display snake? You're darn tootin' it is! I mean, oh my gosh, look at this thing! I adore them, I have been thrilled with this guy. He has surpassed all my expectations for what a jungle carpet python would be like to have as a pet. And as I mentioned before, I spent some time getting him over um, being sick. And I harassed the heck out of him for two weeks while I gave him antibiotics. And during that full two week period while I did something that it was obvious he hated, he was nothing but a gentle soul. And these guys probably do not deserve the reputation they have, but they do deserve respect. So if you get one, expect it to be a snake you need to respect, but also expect it to be a snake you will enjoy thoroughly. As always, like and subscribe. Click the little bell so you get notifications when videos about other just stinking rad reptiles come out. Also, thank you to you guys on Patreon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Patreon bought this snake so that I could give you a really thorough review of the Jungle Carpet Python. And I am very, very grateful for that. That, that has been excellent. It's been a great experience for me because this is a snake I've wanted to talk about since the beginning of this channel. But it was just a snake. It's a snake with a bad reputation and one that I didn't have enough personal experience with to feel like I could give you a fair analysis. And now, because of you guys, I can. So thank you. And we hope to see you real soon. Isn't he glorious? He's mine. I really like that coloration. Is that a morph? No. That's the normal... Yeah, he's, he's maybe a particularly bright individual because some of them can kind of brown out as they get older, but he's... this is... This is a wild type jungle carpet pigeon. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's one of the best colorations anything could have.